Welcome back, everybody. I'm delighted you've decided to join this journey. Today, we're going to go down one level in detail. And um, we're going to start with those pseudo range equations that I introduced last time. And so the first snippet will be about those pseudo ranges. But the thing I'm going to introduce there deliberately are the errors and give you a first look at the measurement errors that impact GPS. One of the other things that will strike you about the pseudo range equations when we look at them here momentarily is that they're nonlinear. The things that we would like to know are buried under a square root sign. So your techniques from uh, freshman algebra for inverting a linear set of equations won't work. And so we're going to have to explore linearization. And that will be our second snippet. Once those equations are linearized, then we can go ahead and solve them for the estimanda. The estimanda mean the parameters that we're interested in, the unknowns that we would really like to know, the three-dimensional location of the user, and the time offset of the user clock relative to GPS time. So that will be our snippet 2.3. Following that, we'll ask and answer the question, how well does it all work? How do the me measurement errors that we measure, we talk about in snippet 2.1, propagate through these linearized navigation equation to disturb and introduce errors into our estimates of our location? And part and parcel of that investigation will be so-called dilution of precision, or DOP. And we'll get back to that soon enough. Finally, 2.5 will be a snippet that summarizes the impact of the errors on GPS, especially when we consider different environments for the operation of GPS, and especially when we consider environments that allow us to see many satellites or just a few satellites. So that's our plan. Let's start in on 2.1. So we'll begin by taking a look at the pseudo range equations that we've looked at previously. Here they are. And we have written them for four satellites. It's not always the case. We may have more than four in view. We may have four in view. Or we may have less than four. You may ask, when would we have less than four? It should have been designed uh, uh, to have at least four in view. But if, imagine if you're uh, in a so-called urban canyon in a city in between tall buildings on both sides. Those buildings will block much of the sky. So we still have to accommodate and think about the case when we only have three or two or even only one satellite measurement. So take a look at the top one, tau superscript 1. So tau means our pseudo range measurement. The superscript 1 will always mean for satellite 1. So notice that when we look on the right hand side, we have the square root of xu minus x1 squared plus yu minus y1 squared plus zu minus z1 squared. That's nothing other than the Euclidean distance from the user located at xu, yu, zu to that first satellite x1, y1, z1. So not surprisingly, that form repeats itself in all four equations. The thing that we should be mindful of <clears throat> is that with that square root and the square operating on the estimanda, x, u, y, u, z, u, this is not a linear equation of the unknowns. So we have to be prepared for linearization. We'll get there in the next snippet, but let's take it one step at a time. In addition to the Euclidean distance, we have b, u. And b, u is something we've talked about previously. That's the impact of the user clock offset being different than GNSS or GPS system time. Fortunately, that BU appears the same in all of the four uh, pseudo range measurement equations. Because BU appears the same, it's something that we can manage as another unknown to be solved for. So taken together, the things that we seek, the things that we're going to estimate, are x u, y u, b u. 
The thing that we need to know from the satellite is the X1, Y1, Z1, or the XK, YK, ZK. That comes from the navigation message. And all the other things that we don't know, all the other measurement errors, are collected at the far right of those four equations. There you see the Greek letter nu, sub u, super 1, super 2, super 3, super 4. New u means the error suffered by the user u in the measurement to the kth satellite. So I'm okay that you're okay with this structure. Please study it. It is really, really worth your time, and it is key to almost everything we do from this point forward in this course. Here's a cartoon, and this is uh, the uh, output of my uh, greatest cartooning art. And you see there the user, the stick figure, the green stick figure, standing on the surface of the Earth. And depicted around that user are the various errors that get picked up in that mu term that we were just talking about. Lead amongst them in the upper right, the satellite location as it's broadcast is not quite the actual location. It's very close. It's generally within one meter. So we show that error as that vector going from the actual satellite location, just shown as a circle, over to the broadcast one, also shown as a, look, uh, a circle. In addition, the satellite makes a statement about its own clock. And even in that case, actual and broadcast are a little bit different. About one billionth of a second is not unusual, one third of a meter if we measure it in distance rather than time. The signals come down, you see the red arrows, the one going down to the user directly is the wave that we really count on. The reflections that arise very frequently in GPS applications are troublesome because they travel a route other than the one described by that Euclidean distance I showed you one view graph ago. And so those signals appear later, and they can cause the measurement of arrival time to both have positive and negative errors therein. In cities, those reflections tend to be the greatest errors, and they can lead to GPS positioning errors of tens of meters. In addition, you see the yellow band there, and that yellow band is in between the satellite and a user on the surface of the Earth, and it's called the ionosphere. And the ionosphere causes the wave to slow relative to the speed of light. And so that means that that Euclidean distance does not appear without modification. We have a certain slowing of the wave due to the ionosphere. And as the wave comes closer to the surface of the Earth, it enters into that blue shaded band. And that's no longer the ionosphere, but rather another atmospheric layer. It's called the troposphere. It also causes the wave to slow. Now, <clears throat> for, for waves coming from more or less above, so-called zenith, the ionospheric delay can be anywhere from one meter to five or six meters. The tropospheric delay is quite a bit smaller than that when the signal comes from above. However, if the satellite is over on the horizon, just by the geometry of these concentric spheres, the amount of time it spends in the troposphere increases greatly, and the amount of time that it spends transecting the ionosphere does not increase so greatly. So interestingly, the troposphere, which is the smaller error for satellites directly overhead, can in fact be larger for satellites on the horizon. So it's a complicated situation. In addition, we get so-called natural noise that just accompanies this 1.5 gigahertz signal into the front end of the user receiver. And on occasion, we get so-called RFI. RFI is distinct from natural noise because it means man-made noise. We call it radio frequency interference. So all of those sources contribute to GPS errors. 
this view graph captures the errors that we listed on the last uh, or depicted on the last view graph, and it also includes our nice equation for the pseudo range, so it puts those things together. Be aware that we now notate this tau sub c, and that means that we have uh, taken the raw measured pseudo range and done our very best job to correct it for the errors on the last view graph. For example, delta i here now means the ionospheric delay but the ionospheric delay after we've done our best job to re remove our modeled estimate of that. Similarly for troposphere, and here delta capital B means that, uh, uh, that that is the satellite clock error after we've used the data in the navigation message to correct for it. So that's why we call this tau sub C. And this really is just a single satellite snapshot of what we looked at two view graphs ago. Two view graphs ago, we had a stack of four such measurements. We've expanded it to show the errors, but the same D sub U uh, appears down here. That's the true range from the satellite to the user. X, U, Y, U, Z, U appear there, and we uh, show that here also associated with the user location. And as we know, X, U, Y, U, Z, U, B, U is our state, our user state, or estimanda, which is fancy talk for those things that we want to estimate. And D, U appears there pictorially and down here mathematically. Up here, we've shown the satellite and associated with it something that we can call the satellite state, if you like, X, K, Y, K, Z, K, it's Cartesian coordinates, and B, K, it's clock offset. Um, uh, one last note on this view graph is we are using here Earth-centered, Earth-fixed reference frame, and so we notate that just as we will going forward with X, Y, Z for Cartesian, in this case centered at the Earth uh, mass origin, and the super subscript T means for terrestrial or uh, equivalently, we could have said Earth-centered, Earth-fixed, but uh, those two things may mean the same in terms of the notation in this course. So um, I hope this has been helpful, and um, I look forward to coming back to you uh, shortly.